What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here reviewing today Resident Evil Umbrella Core. In the last 20 years, this series has changed a lot. From the dark hallways of a zombie-filled mansion to the streets of Raccoon City and even mutant battles and underground laboratories. I think it's safe to say that Resident Evil was long considered a pinnacle of horror, which is why it's sad to see that this newest entry is nothing more than a horrible online squad-based shooter. We're playing as one of the elite soldiers in Umbrella's private army. These deadly mercenaries are paid for each job that can successfully survive, which means that when the company wants to cut costs, they just need to make sure a few of them don't come back alive. While the game's main focus is online multiplayer, it does have a small single-player campaign as well. Missions in story mode have you wandering around the seven tiny maps, trying to collect objectives and avoid the undead. Calling this story mode is being rather generous, since really, it doesn't have much plot. This was clearly added just to give people a way to practice the different match types before going into verses. As I'm sure you've already noticed, the animations in this game are strangely bad. Everyone moves like robots, and the monsters patrolling the area almost seem like they have no eyes because they barely pay attention to our character. Even though these zombies don't look threatening, it's a good idea to constantly stay on the move. If any of these creatures touch you, it can sometimes be an instant kill. That's right, our fully armored, specially trained fighter can't take being pecked once by a bird, but he can be hit with a shotgun and walk away. This highlights the biggest underlying problem with Umbrella Corps as a whole. It has so many glitches and balance issues that keep you from ever being able to fully sink into the experience. Thankfully, this is slightly easier to overlook when you're going head-to-head -head in multiplayer. Let's break down what all you can do online. There are five different game modes that are selected at random. First team to win three rounds claims victory. There's Team Deathmatch, Domination, which has you taking over zones. DNA, a type where super mutants show up and must be slain for points. Briefcase is a mode that places cash-filled boxes on the map. And finally, there's Target Hunter. This makes it so that one of your teammates is considered the king and needs to be protected for as long as possible. Every match is incredibly fast. You're given three minutes to win each round, but it's rare that you'll need that long. This is for two reasons. Characters run at roughly 30 miles an hour, and the maps are super small. You can get from one end of an area to the other in mere seconds. I'm guessing that they did this to keep action at a brutal pace, but it just ends up giving off this lame sense of being stuck in a shoebox. Getting to revisit the village from Resident Evil 4 is awesome, and yet, suddenly having a mega-powered warrior who can scale walls and punch zombies to bits makes it all so meaningless. Umbrella Corps honestly feels like it was somehow made by two separate development teams. Part of it craves to be taken seriously as a hardcore online shooter, while the rest wants to have winding hallways, creepy shadows, and giant monster dogs. Just as an example, look at the fact that it has a cover system. There's no logic behind that. Players die from a few bullets, and the undead don't have guns, so why is it that I can stick myself to walls and blind fire around corners? Despite how odd this combination mechanics is, there are still some cool moments. When you're chasing after an enemy, hoping to score that winning kill with your axe, it can be quite the rush. If I had to sum up Umbrella Corps in a single sentence, I would say this. It's too busy for its own good. Everything that would make the gameplay unique gets washed down by the weird ways we're forced to fight. Perhaps the only thing that it does flawlessly is the upgrade system. Competing in ranked matches gives you experience points, which levels you up and gives you access to a huge set of customization choices. You can get new gear, decals to stick on your helmet, and even bizarre paint in case you want a pink pistol. When you use a particular weapon, it'll also gain its own levels, adding in extra options for laser sights and silencers. The ability to make your own detailed loadout is deep and surprisingly well done. It almost makes me think that this was originally going to be a free-to-play title that just sold skins. Overall, this game is a complete mess that fails to be fun and also completely flops when it comes to classic Resident Evil fear. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's head over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Umbrella Core a 5.5 .5 out of 10. 
Even if you absolutely love Resident Evil as much as I do, it's probably a good idea to avoid this dumpster fire altogether. Thanks so much for watching gamers, this has been Dreamcast Guy with another review. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But, do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.